we've all won pennants, Kevin, and it's been special. You won more than any of us up here. But I think we all admit this is different, this is historical, and this transcends sports. This is bigger than baseball, it's bigger than sports, and it's emotional. Someone who loves baseball as much as all I do, as much as all of us do, you see the emotion back here, and this is the greatest thing for our game, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. You know, I think about, I think about Tom Ricketts, who bought this team, and he said, hey, want to win the World Series? We want to redo Wrigley, and we want to be good in the community. So. This is a guy that went to school in Chicago. This is a guy that met his wife in the stands at Wrigley Field. I mean, what an incredible thing to buy the hometown team. I know he's not, he wasn't born here, but to buy the hometown team and now this. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to him. They love their Cubs. They love the Cubs. You know, you know. Can you hear that, Cleveland? You know, Kevin, uh, going, going to Tom Ricketts, the owner. Uh, a product of Chicago University, undergrad and business school, yes. a fan of the Cubs, and really a long-term vision when it comes to investing and bringing in Theo and then Joe Madden and then John Lester. It's really been a masterpiece. And I've met Mr. Riggs plenty of times. What a class act. I mean, if you meet the guy, you won't even know he's an owner. I mean, he's, he's real genuine. He comes up and says hello to everybody else. But this has been very patient, the way they built this team. Theo did his thing once again. He did it in Boston. He's done it in Chicago. It took a lot of patience. I remember how it was after the third year. People were going, this team was going nowhere. And then the next year, they made the magical moves of bringing in Leicester. They put the, the kids were ready to go. And, and one year later, they just won the National League Championship Series. The Cubs prove you don't have to take that long to rebuild. Four years or so, Theo did the job here. So other teams should take notice of that. And not worrying about an eight or nine year development program. You can get to the top if you sign the right people and have the right players. Right. And draft like they did draft for right. sure. And that even goes back to Jim Hendry, the former general manager. Obviously, some of those players under him. Joe Madden got out of his contract last year, Frank. Cubs snatched him up. The guy's been in the World Series with Tampa. And he clearly has brought something to this team. Clearly. Well, you saw what he did in Tampa. And when he got here, he embraced this whole Cubs. Everything about the losing and the gold and all this other crap. Joe embraced it. He had fun with it. They made a lot of jokes last year. Right away, they started to win. And this year, he said he had unfinished business. And they're going to the World Series. It's a reality now. It's going to be one heck of a World Series, as I'm sure the Cleveland Indians are waiting for them. Yeah. But it's going to be one special World Series with two very big clubs. I don't know if this is true or not. But the young players may look at Joe as a father type, the way he treats them. He gets them to play hard every day. He gets them to believe in themselves every day. And that's why they're on the team. You know, a team that believes in Saber metrics so much and is big data driven, you know, give Theo a lot of credit to bring in a, an incredible communicator like Joe Madden. And isn't it a coincidence that both Theo's past hires are now playing against each other in the World Series? Tito and Cano and, and Joe Madden. And player managers in baseball. Why? What makes them so good? You know, they, they really relate to these players, and they're more like a father figure but a brother, too. Uh, both of these managers are, are great in their clubhouses, and you're going to see it in the field in, in the World Series. They both believe in their clubs. They got a heartbeat of their clubhouses. We're in for a treat, Cleveland against Chicago. You know, those are two really good teams. I talked to some of their players in the practice, and one of the things they talked about is Joe says there are no rules. Wear whatever you want. If you wear flip flops, you have to paint your toenails. <laughs> just go out, <laughs> just go out and play hard. I said, wow, that's a very liberal clubhouse. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, his motto was try not to suck. You heard it right away with you. That's what he said out there. We didn't suck. No. You know, that's the type of attitude he has. He's yeah. real laid back, but he's one heck of a player's manager. You gotta respect that. You know, Kevin, this is not, I mean, the really big picture is, is the four horsemen at the top. When sure. you talk about the owner and Theo and Joe Madden and Joe Lester, but it's about subtleties. If you think about the signings of Lackey, Ben Zofras, David Ross, Dexter Fowler in the trade at the July deadline for, Rick, uh, for Ryan Dempster, one for one for a young man called Kyle Hendricks. Today looks pretty big.